Chair Detmer, would you like to move your bill before the committee and have and that it be re-referred to the Education Policy Committee? Thank you. I, I move my bill. Chair Detmer, your bill is before us. I understand you also have an author's amendment titled A1. Would you like to move adoption of your amendment? Yes, uh, House File um, 2788. I have the A1 amendment. Uh, I'd like to move that. Uh, there's some just clarifying some language that's in the bill, and uh, this was brought to my attention uh, this past week. So I wanted to <coughs> make sure that this got changed before we sent it off to the next committee. Does everyone have a copy of the A1 amendment? Are any Are there any questions on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The amendment is adopted. Chair Detmer, please tell us about your bill. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and, and uh, committee members. Uh, I think you know over the years I've been uh, keeping an open mind about veterans' issues. And this past uh, uh, interim, I was approached by the recru recruiting command and uh, about some issues uh, that's going on in the state regarding uh, uh, military recruiters from any branch coming into the uh, our K-12 education facilities, our schools, being able to, during college fairs and being able to uh, set up and answer questions about the military services. And uh, as you know, I was an educator for uh, 34 years at Forest Lake High School, and uh, this was never an issue. We, in fact, recruiters would come down to me and talk to me, and uh, they would bring in uh, their, their staff during the uh, college fairs where all the different colleges were brought in and they would set up tables talking about uh, whether it's the, uh, the, uh, the academies, the Army, Navy, Air Force uh, academies, Coast Guard, and all the different branches would come in and be able to be there just to answer questions from students. So uh, uh, when this was brought to my attention that uh, there's been some maybe a pushback on allowing recruiters into our schools, I thought it'd be better to uh, maybe approach that from a legislative point of view just to support schools and support our students that are that are being educated in our public schools and our charter schools that uh, allowing uh, access to these schools that uh, would would give students a better idea of what the service in our military is all about and be able to ask questions. So with that, I have uh, Captain Young, uh, Young here from the United States Army and Major and Andrew uh, Nicholson from the United States Marine Corps. They would like to just share and uh, talk about uh, why we have this going forward. So, and uh, the captain, the good captain here, was the first one that came into my office uh, uh, during the interim. Thank you, Mr. Rick. Captain, Mr. can Chair. you please state your name for the record, please? Captain Young Yoon. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, committee members, ladies and gentlemen, the audience. I'm captain Yoon, the company commander of Army Recruiting Operations here in the Twin Cities area. I have with me my senior enlisted advisor, First Sergeant Baker. We'd like to thank you all here today for the opportunity to discuss the need for the proposed bill. Because currently of today's societal challenges, the Army, the nation's Army is finding difficulties in maintaining an all-volunteer force, which has serious implications to not only our nation's security, but also our local communities here in Minnesota. We attribute our difficulties to four main factors. The first one, there exists a knowledge gap in our youth of the military career options. The second, the media's linear portrayal of the military. The third, there's unqualified applicants because of low aptitude test scores such as the ASVAB, physical limitations or moral issues such as criminal offenses, and unemployment rate being at 4.5%. I'll elaborate on the first three with data from the DOD and the Department of the Army. The first factor, the knowledge gap in our youth. There's only 1% currently in the U.S. population currently serving, and only 7% has served at one point in their life. A recent survey taken by the DOD reported that currently 50% of our youth admitted they know little to nothing about the military career options. Moreover, there has been a 35% decline in veteran population. We believe the downward trends in our veteran population coupled with the small force of Americans currently serving will cause wider knowledge gap for the next generation of our youth. 
The second factor with the media. The media portrays the military as gunslinging Rambos, which is uh, misperceptions of the full spectrum that the military truly encompasses. We have over 200 careers that range from JAG lawyers, nurses, military policemen, engineers, project managers, to dog handlers. We believe the high school educators and the counselors can help us disabuse this misconceived perception towards the military imposed by the media. The third factor regarding unqualified applicants. We believe that adding Armed Forces career options as a career pathway for high school students will help some students do better in high school and stay out of trouble. Not every, not every student finds a calling with going to college immediately after high school, <clears throat> nor working menial jobs lacking higher purpose. And for those who find a passion or calling to serve in uniform during their high school education, those students may try harder to maintain good grades in order to graduate to serve, and more importantly, stay out of trouble and become law-abiding citizens to join our ranks. In sum, what we would like to envision is our Minnesota educators, counselors, and students to be better informed of the full spectrum of the Army's capabilities and its available career options. We believe that our future workforce needs to know all the opportunities that they have avail available to them. After high school, there are three routes students can take. It's college, work, or technical, and the Army can provide all three. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Chair Detmer, your next uh, testifier. We got uh, Major Andrew Nicholson, United States Marine Corps. Mr. Chairman, committee, ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for this opportunity. Major Andrew Nicholson, I'm the recruiting station commanding officer for the Marine Corps, which encompasses not only the state of Minnesota, but also the state of South Dakota, North Dakota, and a good part of Wisconsin. So I, I have a great opportunity to see across state um, and, and be able to compare how Minnesota is doing with uh, with our recruiting efforts. Uh, I'd just like to remind everybody, um, the Marine Corps is our Marine Corps, and, and it's an honor for me to serve and represent you uh, as you're one of your most senior Marines um, in the state of Minnesota. So I, I did have a slide presentation. I, I don't know if we have access to that. Do you have it on a laptop? Oh, oh I, I did send oh. it to Mr. Holquist. <laughs> there we go. All right, Check. it's coming up. If we could, sir, I'm sorry. <laughs> the slides. I said to Mr. Members, I, there's also a copy of it in your packet. Okay, great. So if you could just uh, flip to the mission statement slide. And I, I think, uh, generally speaking, most people um, understand the mission of the Marine Corps as to win our nation's battles. However, um, I want to draw a light to uh, two other missions that the Marine Corps does have. You know, the first being we make Marines, and we make Marines at our recruit depots in uh, San Diego, California, and Paris Island, South Carolina. Um, your fine um, young and women from this state will be going to San Diego. And uh, you know, first, before we make Marines, we have to find Marines, and, and that's the challenging part of this duty is finding Marines. And, and I'll get into examples of that here soon. Just continue. Uh, if you have major. the slides, so. Yeah. Major, if you just want to continue, we all have copies. Okay, we great. Get. Our second mission, obviously, is to win our nation's battles. Okay, and you know, Marine Corps, by and large, we do a great job of that. Okay, thirdly, um, which I think I, I want to draw the most attention to, is we return quality citizens to the U.S. In this case, um, as we enlist your youth or commission your youth out of Minnesota, they are coming back. And as you can see across this room right now, there are service members, past service members that are back um, doing great things in the state of Minnesota. Um, okay. So the next slide is a slide with uh, this, the, uh, the U.S. broken down by propensity to serve by state. I think this is a very impactful slide. And when I first uh, received orders here to Minnesota, um, it's one of the first things I want to look at. W what am I walking into? Well, I'll tell you, I think I was shocked, and probably you all are shocked as well, to see that propensity to serve 
And the state of Minnesota is significantly lower than most of the other states. Okay, only one other state across the U.S. has a lower propensity. Um, not saying Minnesota is not patriotic, because I'll tell you, I, I've I've lived in lots of states, and uh, this, by and large, is one of the most patriotic states I've seen. Uh, but for some reason, um, the general youth does not want to serve. Okay, a lot of reasons to that. Anecdotally, is um, basis. You know, active duty bases in the state of Minnesota, um, zero, okay, zero. The Marines have two reserve bases on Fort Snelling, and, and that's about it. So our challenge in the state of Minnesota is more difficult than other states that have just the, uh, the exposure uh, to the military. But it does give you perspective uh, of how we're doing as a state and with the people that is serving. So the question I think uh, we all wanna know is how do we increase this propensity? And that's a question I've been trying to figure out for the last 18 months on this duty. Okay, and I think the bill that the, uh, the representative here wants to get at is, uh, can precisely um, help us increase propensity. Because propensity to serve starts in high schools. Okay, it starts in high schools when they're most impressionable and, and they have to make one of the hardest decisions in their life, you know, student. So there is a direct correlation, I believe, in the propensity to serve across the state with our access to high schools and how well we're doing, educating our youth in the high schools regarding the military. Any questions on this slide? Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to clarify, so is this specifically for the Marines or is this all branches? This is all branches, ma'am. This is all branches, okay. Yes, so I know we have a pretty strong Army Reserve and National Guard here. Now, I don't think this takes in consideration the National Guard, okay. but active duty uh, branches, so Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Army. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think our Red Bulls are probably not represented here because we've got quite a few Red Bulls. So yeah, I, I personally know several. So yeah, I, I, we have a good representation from the state there. And that's not surprising to me the, the least bit because uh, the National Guard is the Marine Corps' biggest competitor, uh, flying the most qualified youth to serve. Representative <laughs> Lesh. Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Major. Uh, when I was with the, my light infantry unit, I swear like 15% of our formation was former Marines. So we, we draw a lot from you. Thank you for sending them our way. <laughs> but but I, I'd also add that it's, you know, I get that. I get, you know, you want active duty folks. We need active duty folks. We need full-time standing uh, a military. But because of that, that lack of active duty posts, the, the robust nature of, of the National Guard here has just kind of taken over. Uh, and I imagine it would be extremely hard to compete because this is a relationship business, right? It's word of mouth, who you meet and everything. And if there's already a, a line in to someone they see going to work in a uniform, that's going to make a, a big difference. Um, but I would note also that some of your best recruitment comes from people uh, coming out of National Guard or Reserve components as well, right? I mean, they're already set up to do it, I can imagine. I know uh, maybe not, not Marines, but I know Army. Um, you know, when I'll go through, a lot of people say, well, I want to go active duty. So I don't know if the numbers take that into consideration either. Maybe they don't. Uh, yes, sir. Um, we, we do receive a fair portion of our, I'm sorry, not even fair, um, probably just a handful. I, and I'm speaking in terms of maybe 10 out of about the 400 we enlist into the Marine Corps out of the state of Minnesota, probably 10. Um, and it's speculative, of course, but probably 10 come from prior service National Guard. So not many. Um, and, and I, would, sorry, Mr. Sure, I would add to I know you have a Marine Reserve unit here too um, as well. Uh, uh, you have Marine, a Marine Reserve unit here in Minnesota, am Major, I correct? Major Nicholson. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. We have two reserve units on Fort Snelling. Okay. And, I, and the only reason I knew Marines had a reserve component, component is uh, we uh, – a couple of my birds blew over their biffies when they were doing on a range up at uh, Camp Ripley a couple of summers ago, and I had to apologize to the Marines because my helicopters blew over their biffies. <laughs> no one was, I'm sure. No one was in them at the time, I'd point out. But <laughs> Major? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would like to point out as well that the active duty is not for everybody. Military service is not for everybody. But I think what this bill gets after is um, – given the students the right education to make a decision on their own with the right information. And I think that's where we're lacking um, currently is our ability to get in front of students, um, educate the students so they can make an educated decision on 
what to do after high school. So, Mr. Chair, if we have no other questions, can we please turn to the state of the market slide? Go ahead. So I'd like to point out the uh, this first sub bullet marketing should focus on getting youth in the district more familiar with what it means to serve in the Marine Corps. So this is this is a DOD wide report that gets sent out by district. And that's uh, this is a study that occurs at the DOD level. So this bill um, that Representative Detmer is, uh, is putting forth will give us the opportunity to educate the, the youth again and get access to them. So currently what we see in high schools is we have access on a monthly, sometimes quarterly basis, and access usually means coming in for a lunchroom setup or a class talk um, during classes. So there's competing requirements as we see it going into high schools. Uh, as we can all remember in high school, you don't want to give up your lunch to go talk to a recruiter. Um, you certainly don't want to give up PE to go talk to a recruiter. Um, and uh, we also see disparities across access in high schools in the state of Minnesota based on school districts. So school districts writ large decide what access we have and we see disparities between school districts. Some open access, some very restrictive access. The second bullet is messaging should focus on clarifying day-to-day -day life and the quality of life benefits. This is, this is where I think the bill gets after educating the counselors. I like to call it educate the educators. And uh, we don't do a great job of that. It's currently the counselors, really the bridge out of high school into the uh, civilian world, um, are selling two main things as I talk to counselors. They're selling workforce or they're selling college. And if they can't, if students do not have the grades or they can't afford a university, they go to community college. And uh, I, I think educating the counselors, having them more informed about what the military is and the benefits of joining the military will go a long way for us. And just to my last slide with questions, Mr. Chair, that's all I have. Are there any questions for the testifiers? Um, I just want to say thank you very much for the work that you uh, all do. And uh, I know for a fact uh, there was a, a younger version of myself that needed a little direction. I was a farm kid and not many educational opportunities for me. And uh, the recruiters uh, pointed me in the direction, and I uh, got some uh, the direction and, and uh, training I needed to become a, a, a high-tech professional. So I, I really do appreciate the work you do, and thank you. Sir. <laughs> Uh, Representative Lesh, you had a question for the testifiers again? Well, I'll pass, Mr. Chair. And uh, Representative Becker Finn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I see uh, Mr. Michael coming, our, coming up here, so I, I'll, I'll hold off till then. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, Representative Rosenthal. I'll hold off. Yeah. All right. And we have, uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, and we have another testifier, Dr. Susan Larson. If you want to step up to the podium. I would have to apologize to the uh, committee. The, I'm not a high tech person here. Uh, we didn't get the slides off, so. But, we'll forgive you this time, yeah, Chair. That's fine. <laughs> and and uh, can you please state your name, please, for the record? Yes, sir. I'm Dr. Susan Larson. I'm a resident of Ramsey County. I'm also the education specialist for the active Army and, and Reserve. And I would like to address the education gap for our school counselors. And also to note that we are behind our sister states such as North Dakota, Colorado, uh, Ohio, Dr. and Indiana in this area where they are requiring Dr. Larson, assistance. if I could interrupt you for just one second, just this is being referred to the Education Committee after this. Oh, very good. Okay. But I would also say, as, I, as the liaison for the Army in these schools, I find counselors with lamentably low uh, levels of knowledge and experience. And we find that really students are, are not ready for a full range of choices. And I'd like to support this, uh, this bill being referred to the Education Committee 
exactly for that reason because I'm speaking with educators every day and they simply don't know the options that are out there for every branch of service. And that's the other point is to bring in not just one recruiter but to open up all of the opportunities for all of our students. Thank you. Are there any questions for this testifier? Uh, oh. Any other questions for this testifier? Aye. Uh, Representative May Quaid. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Dr. Larson, so you talked a little bit about how counselors have limited knowledge, and I'm looking uh, when it comes to the armed forces, and I'm looking at this bill, and it says a counselor must present and explain the career opportunities. Do you see if, if counselors have a low knowledge and maybe they don't take continuing ed in learning some of this, do you see that the low knowledge then must having to tell uh, students about this translating into misinformation? I think there's I think there's an excellent opportunity for education at the Minnesota, through the Minnesota School Counselors Association pre presentations which would address all of our our uh, secondary and even middle school counselors at that point at as it currently stands I think it would be a challenge mm -hmm. for most of our counselors to present in an in an informed and balanced manner all of the opportunities if the primary being primary misconception being that if you serve in the military, you will not attend college. In fact, the majority of people we put into my branch have college credit coming into the Army and through our CONAP program do, are required to start the college admissions process. Uh, Representative McWade. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and just to follow up, the, we have a very high um, student to counselor ratio in Minnesota. Has that played into some of the the ability or lack thereof for counselors to kind of present the full breadth of, of options? Absolutely. Okay. That's, that, that's a huge challenge. Co students, counselors have a hard time getting through just the, the mm -hmm. basics. Mm -hmm. But if we, under, if we are to believe the current uh, statistics put out by Gallup that only 36% of college students feel that college will pre prepare them for the world of work and careers. I truly see that we have a lot of work to do in encouraging our counselors to have get students ready for the world of work, both after college, through the workforce, and with the possibility of military service. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Larson. And we have another testifier spec, uh, stepping up here. And if you could please keep your comments to the Veterans Affairs and uh, remember that this is being referred to the Educational Committee. Sure, thank, thank you. you. And uh, state your name for the record, please. Sure, uh, Tom Diamond. And my comments will be uh, personal as you see me with uh, representing an organization a lot of the times. But just uh, we have not had a chance to uh, uh, look at this collectively uh, because it just came out. And I'm also at the disadvantage that uh, the A1 amendment was not uh, available online and is not available at the meeting, so I've seen that. But based on what uh, was available, I'd uh, like to speak to this. I, first of all, I'll say I'm a veteran uh, and I'm honored to have served. But I would strongly encourage you to look at the principles that we so often talk about, those about that were best to have decisions made at the local level and we also should not uh, force uh, unfunded mandates onto our local level. This bill does both of them. I'd also like to mention that I'm old enough to know why this is the way it is. This is, comes out of great conversations that we had as a community in, in, throughout our, our uh, towns and uh, in cities throughout the state about whether they wanted the school district's role to serve as a, a recruiter for the Department of Defense. We can agree or disagree on that issue, but I think that's an important issue that ought to be considered here. If we're talking about public service and we're trying to encourage uh, our young uh, members of Minnesota that's a whole different category. There are all sorts of opportunities, Peace Corps, various health programs that around the world would be health, teaching, the CDC, that help people around the world 
and provide a, 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 a great representation of what this country stands for around the world, but also within this country in areas that do not have the resources to provide the health, the housing, uh, and food that people uh, need. One of the things, and this does not require anything except it requires that uh, advocacy for the Department of Defense, but not any other uh, public role. What about uh, uh, career diplomats? That's an important thing. And it puts the burden on the school districts. I live in St. Paul. I live in a very diverse uh, neighborhood. There's great demands on our school system. We nearly had the school district uh, shut down because of the tussle to try and come to uh, resolution on how to provide the services for the students that they needed within the budget limitations that they, they had. And one of the things that the uh, Federation of Teachers advocated for was counselors because they have been cut horribly in the uh, effort to try and balance budgets. And so this then takes that away from the school district because now it dedicates part of that time to a specific purpose for training. They have to get training. They have to. They're required, mandated in this legislation to take time to do this. That may be appropriate, but that should be decided at the local level whether that is what is more important in that uh, counseling session or other uh, careers that are more fitting for the individual as they know those students. Because right now, we don't have the resources to do everything. And so I would uh, strongly urge you to keep the decision making at the local level and uh, to keep the op options for the counselors to look at all the possibilities for their uh, uh, students that they're helping so they can guide them in the best direction that works for them. Thank you. Representative Lesh, you had a question? Well, I just uh, thank you for your, your testimony, Mr. Diamond. Um, and uh, I know you, and we've worked together, um, but um, I just need to, to disagree with you. And I, and I understand your point on this. Um, but folks remember that in, in the immediate aftermath and during World War II, it was nearly 20% of our nation that wore the uniform of their country, okay? Uh, at one time or another. Everyone participated in the nation's common defense. And the reason for that, why we relied on recruits uh, or um, a draft, goes back to England where we didn't maintain a large standing army because it was a threat to the government. And also because everyone would have to participate in the nation's common defense. And now when we have less than 1% of America serving, we are in danger of a substantial military civilian gap and a lack of understanding of the civilian population, what the military does. And that endangers both the military and I think civilians. We need to have people rotate in and rotate out. And if we don't, if we don't take an active stance in encouraging that, we run the risk of driving that wedge even further into the civilian military divide. And when that happens, you get a permanent military class, you get a permanent civilian class, and countries like that we've seen in history don't remain free, I think. It's just my opinion. And so I understand where you're coming from. I absolutely do. But from what I've seen in my time in service, I think we need more people to rotate through to understand what the military is about. And I, and I remember in my high school, I remember Osseo High School. I remember we had military on one side of the hallway, and, and you probably remember this, Mr. Diamond, why this was, uh, but, and I didn't get it at the time in high school, but we had the military recruiter on one side, and down the hall on the other side, there was this aging hippie send, selling uh, swag with like, like, like peace buttons and stuff, and a bunch of us bought that stuff. We thought it was cool and everything. And I think it was an effort by the school board to provide, you know, two contrasting opinions, because that wasn't too far in the wake of Vietnam, where there was a lot of anger over the role of the military. But after my time in, um, I sincerely believe that the military can be better helped, uh, be better made accountable by the civilian population when more civilians rotate through and therefore have a stake in what the military is doing. And then I think that that keeps our nation more accountable and more free. Just my opinion. But 
I Mr. respect Di yours as well. Mr. Diamond. If, if I could just respond, uh, I don't disagree. Uh, yes. What uh, I would point out is that focusing on this as the reason why we are having trouble enlisting, and if you've heard the issues that were raised, I would uh, suggest <coughs> does not uh, illustrate the full picture. I would argue that things such as the endless wars that this country is in with no congressional authorization and no explanation or uh, reason why we are staying in those being illustrated by uh, Congress and the multiple deployments uh, 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 rather than having the resources available so uh, our service members can actually have a family life and, and uh, also serve. There are issues like that that are part of this issue. And if we focus our, uh, on the school districts, taking resources away from education, other education, uh, I think uh, misses the mark. Representative Lush. Well, thank you, and I, I don't, don't wanna get into a back and forth. I, I appreciate and absolutely respect your opinion, Mr. Diamond, but I would point out that the most costly and ongoing wars um, that this nation has had have been during the time of an all-volunteer force, when the military has been absolutely free to pull the trigger for as long as it wants to without any substantial pushback from the civilian population because they don't have a stake in it. Um, so I, 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 would just, I would just offer that. I, that's my argument for accountability, but I don't mean to get into a back and forth because I, I respect your position. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Chair. I, uh, I think we're kind of getting off base here. I think the whole purpose of this bill is to uh, allow the uh, different branches to access into the school and set up and allow them to answer questions from students. And many times those questions then are taken back home to the parents and those, thing, those questions and are discussed. I can recall many times uh, my uh, 34 years as a teacher and my 25 years in the military that uh, the recruiters would come in and sit down with me and chat with me about students. And I'd always encourage them to uh, reach out to the parents, reach out to the students, and uh, give uh, them the information that, and answer questions that they have. And that's the whole purpose of this bill, is to allow access to, uh, uh, I know uh, my high school where I teach, and also I represent uh, where I used to teach, and then also I represent uh, uh, Stillwater and Chisago Lakes and Forest Lake. And, they are very open to recruiters coming in and setting up during college fairs. We're talking about college fairs when, when the different colleges come in and talk about what they have to offer students. And this is what we're talking about here. And again, this is going on to the Education uh, Policy Committee. So All right, thank and, you. Uh, uh, the captain here would like to maybe make a comment here too. Captain, okay. state your name again, please. Captain Young Yoon. So the gentleman before uh, discussed taking resources, we really believe the bill provisions the resources to these educators. I feel like the re educators and counselors need to be better formed of the military career options. I believe that some of the counselors and educators are working in the blind, uh, not being able to provide all the information to our uh, students for them to inform, to to better inform of them of all the available military career options. Uh, the gentleman before me also discussed the, the training, the onerous training difficulties. Uh, we believe that we could offset that by leverage te leveraging technology. We could have an easy format for webcasts, webinars, and we could actually go to the schools and do training in person. We have, um, four recruiting companies across the Minnesota state. We recruit for both active duty Army Reserves, and so we could provide, uh, we could provision the, the manpower to conduct these type of trainings, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Captain. Are there any questions? Uh, Representative Beckerfin. Uh, thank you, Chair Bliss. I, and I, I did wanna thank the, all, all, really everyone who's testified and in, including the last gentleman. Um, I did want to point out um, that the, there are really kind of two separate 
issues and pieces to this bill and the access to our schools I mean you folks are much better suited to recruit students than any counselor is going to be because you have served and uh, your access um, to the schools I'm completely like I'm, I'm on board with that and I am very supportive of that and you have much more time to put into building those relationships and really explaining to, to students what their options are um, but I did want to thank the previous testifier too because I, I think his point um, is a good one and I completely agree with with representative Lesh that we certainly need to be recruiting I'm just not sure if that gets you uh, you know requiring extra training and requiring uh, our our counselors to do more than they do already right now um, I know in, in one of the high schools in in my district uh, the counselors get maybe two or three 15 to 20 minute sessions per student per year so I, I know it doesn't seem like a lot from our side but any additional thing that we're putting on their plate you know even if it's only one one hour training that's time that they're not doing something else and so there there is a financial cost and I do think that's a good point and I'm sure that um, this will be discussed further in the, the ed policy committee and I would just encourage uh, Chair Detmer and, and all of you to also advocate for more resources for our counselors so that they can do a better job um, with those resources because as it is the bill doesn't have any money attached and there, there, is, there is a cost to our counselors doing that and I just want to recognize that uh, that's really important. So just want to kind of point out that they're really kind of separate things and you guys really are the best um, more than a counselor who's serving 150 kids who hasn't served our country uh, you you folks are definitely better equipped to do a good job of that so um, thank you for your service and I'll say I have cousins and family members who were, were recruited in high school and it was absolutely the best thing that could have happened for them so thank you representative Rosenthal uh, thank you mr. chair and basically representative Becker Finn echoed my concerns I think the intent of this bill is really 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 good um, you know, I have a senior in high school now he was presented with uh, military options as well as others a couple of his friends are going into active duty which I applaud um, but our counselors are under a lot of stress and they have tremendous staffing ratios and anything we can do to relieve them I think is an important conversation going forward representative look uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, testifiers uh, and uh, Chair Detmer for this bill. Uh, I had an interesting email here uh, about a month ago from a, a constituent. Uh, they wanted me to draft a bill to protect their child from the military recruiters. Um, I, I take every email serious, and uh, and I did. I, I chatted with that person, and uh, uh, you know. Well, how would that work? Well, uh, parents would give permission to uh, the school to decide who uh, could talk to their student. I said, well, would that go for uh, college recruiters? Would that go for uh, folks that would like to work, uh, have their child come uh, in those later years in high school, work in a nursing home? Oh, I said, so you know I I don't think I can go there <laughs> and uh, but we ended on a cordial matter but what that triggered was uh, I've got four complete school districts independent school districts in my district and uh, I chatted with each one of the superintendents and just asked him is just something changed uh, uh, you know where did that email come from and uh, was very pleased to find that at least uh, where the area I, I uh, serve and, and represent uh, those superintendents are just absolutely tickled pink for you folks to show up with your people every opportunity that they have because uh, that issue of being able to explain to a young person what's available and you got to start early because as we know that they've served uh, there are a lot of things if you don't do your homework and you can't meet that aptitude level you don't get to go to those schools you don't get to serve in those particular specialties uh, there's another element that uh, uh, I don't know if a college recruiter talks about this, but there's a huge amount of extremely sensitive. Uh, my world was personnel reliability program uh, that 
uh, it isn't just academics. It's being a good citizen, because if you're not a good citizen uh, and you've got some blemishes on your record, uh, and those, that's the kind of thing that I know, I know that uh, our recruiters bring uh, is uh, it's not just about how well you do in school and how you, you pass your physical test. You have to uh, understand that you can have things happen to you or do things uh, as a youngster that can really uh, uh, limit your opportunities in the service. Uh, and, and so again, I thank you. And I, uh, uh, it's just ironic here. It's, this really makes sense, Chair <laughs> Detmer, thank you. <laughs> And uh, Representative Frankie. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair Detmer, for bringing this forward. I just want to say that um, I support this bill and the opportunities that it provides to our students. We have a great junior ROTC program in one of my school districts, and they do a wonderful job. And I think that um, opening up the opportunities that the uh, this brings to our school districts, sometimes it's just about getting the door open. And I think that if we have the proper people in places, which I'm sure that our armed services will provide, that the best resources are right there um, within those service officers that are doing the recruiting. So um, anything we can do to close that gap, to maybe pick up some of that slack for the um, things that we're putting on our school counselor's plate, um, to have that backfilled by our veteran officers um, would be more helpful. Thank you. And Representative Pryor. Thank you, Vice Chair Bliss. Um, so I am on the Education Policy Committee and I look forward to hearing it and discuss more about um, how that would work in terms of a counselor's burden. Um, the question I have though I think really is for this committee which is can you help me understand the big picture of when is the best time and are, when are most people recruited to, to join the armed forces and, and to go into active duty? Is it at that graduation from high school or is it something that evolves over you know the next years after that captain Yoon yes madam representative uh, I would say it's the initial portion of the senior um, start of the high school so fall mm -hmm. and then also the last semester you're right uh, about the time of graduation major Anderson did you want to respond as well to that <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. So, in my 18 months of doing this, it is uh, it is clear to me that we have to talk to the students in high school. If we don't have the opportunity to talk to them in high school, they won't have that structured opportunity after high school where they can sit down with the recruiter. Um, we miss a great opportunity as a country, as a state, if we don't talk to students in high school. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be during senior year. Um, I know the National Guard is allowed to enlist juniors. Um, most of the other servers are only allowed to enlist seniors, but we can talk to them whenever. So having the opportunity to talk more, um, more often, I think, is beneficial to everybody. Representative Pryor. Thank you. Just to to further that question, just another another level again, just so I understand maybe the impact of what problem we're talking about. Um, that it's that um, workforce basically our military workforce that it's the numbers are going down is that uh, the correct impression that I'm taking away from this and that it that this is about national security major Nicholson yes sir so the Marine Corps we we make our mission so when I get told I have to enlist X amount of people from Minnesota we we do that um, my concern is we miss a lot of oppor there's lost opportunities out there on students in this state that don't have the opportunity to make a sound decision based on service because of many factors um, but th that's my fear and it's a struggle for us to make mission on a, on, on a FY fiscal year basis we do make it happen however I just think there's a lot of youth out there that would benefit and uh, I think we could do better. Captain Yoon, did you want to respond to that at all? No, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Are there any more uh, testifiers or people in the audience that would like to testify? All right, uh, any further discussion? Yes, sir. I, have, I do have a question. My name is Bert Carney, Neil Baker. Can, can you sit down and speak into the microphone, yeah. please? Speak, and state your name again, please. My name is First Sergeant Neil Baker, um, and I'm 
Captain Yoon's uh, senior advisor. I've been doing, uh, I've been a recruiter since 2002, so I've been doing this for a long, long time. Um, one of the uh, one of the concerns that and this addresses is, as I've been going all over the, the country and in Minnesota being my favorite state, by the way, I love this place. Um, <laughs> the concern that I run into is that the, the, the guidance counselors, and this goes to the question of the burden onto the guidance counselors. Guidance counselors in the uh, schools uh, will spend their time to do their research on a college, on a technical school, and they'll do everything they can to get every bit of information they can about that college and that, and that technical school or, or whatever it might be. However, the time spent getting to know what the military can actually do and what the, what the opportunities they can do there's very little or, or none because it, the preference is to send their, school, their kids to this college. And that's the, the, uh, the I, don't, I don't know how to put it, but the, the idea that every kid should go to college, every kid, every kid should go to college because that's what makes them successful. That's what the story is and it starts from the gate. And so I think this goes after that and that there's lots and lots of opportunities in, in all kinds of, uh, in all the branches, including college and technical schools. The opportunity and the time to, to, to train these guidance counselors can easily be taken by our recruiting commands across all the branches. Uh, there's times that the, the teachers sit down with their, uh, and they have a training session, a teacher's day in. There's summer days that they come in and do training and, and education. This, this is time that we can easily come in, step in for a few hours and do some training and education on, on what the military can offer these guidance counselors and the teachers. <laughs> So to the next part is that the guidance counselor is usually the first person to get to talk to that kid about what they're going to do to the, with their future, meaning the parents get their opportunity and their, their education and time is limited with the students. So the idea that, you know, it, I'm sitting down with Johnny to 15 to 20 minutes to talk about whatever it is that they're interested in doing in the future, they should have all of the, the, the knowledge and, and ability to, to present a fair I don't know what the right way to put it, a fair representation of all the different opportunities that they have based on their, on their interests and, and their, their ability to, to, to go to college, go to technical school, or join the workforce or military. That's, that's my only point to this. Thank you. Does anybody have a question for uh, Mr. Baker? All right, uh, Chair Detmer, any closing remarks? Yes, and, and we've had a great discussion, and I, I'm, I know we'll be, I put the, the counseling training in there for a reason. And because uh, I, I thought uh, I would like to get it into the education committee and, and discuss those issues too. But uh, my years as, as an educator and my years in the military, uh, my wife and I have been blessed with twin sons that took the advantage of going to the academy, West Point Academy. Uh, we have the, the Naval Academy, the Air Force Academy, Coast Guard Academy. So those are institutions that uh, are just outstanding for our young people, the, the, the men and women coming out of, our, out of our schools to be able to get into an institution like that. And then uh, with a five-year commitment after graduation with your degrees, uh, many go on to, to spend 20 years, some get out after five years or, or eight years or nine years, maybe join up with the Guard or the Reserve. We want these young men and women to know what's available out there for them. And uh, um, that's why it's, it's really close to my heart that uh, we, are, we allow the, the, the young men and women in our schools to learn as much as they can about the opportunities out there. And uh, I'll just give you a heads up. I'll, I'll have a, I think we'll have another amendment when we get to Education Committee. So stay tuned. So. All right, Chair Detmer moves that House File 2788 as amended be re-referred to the Education Policy Committee. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion prevails and House File 2788 as amended is referred to the Education Policy. Thank you.